everyone. Welcome to the Virtual Summit. It's our pleasure to have you with us today while we talk about our top 10 list for 2011. We're very excited to have you here today and we've been looking forward to this for a long time, especially this virtual aspect of things. Uh, for Green Roofs, this is, this is a momentous occasion. We've been doing this for five years now, our top 10 list. And five long years, but that's okay. As the anniversary, lots of fun. Yeah, lots of fun. <laughs> for the anniversary, we decided we're going to go virtual. And so it works out perfectly. Um, we've got a lot of great examples. We've searched high and low all around the world, through print, through web, um, all sorts of places to bring you the best looking projects we can. You name, and it. You name it, we've searched it, we've been there. We've been there. And we're, we're really looking to not just bring the projects that are good for you, that make you feel good about you know contributing to the environment, but what we really want are the pictures that wow you, the eye candy, if you will, uh, of the green roof. Because girls. it has to inspire us. That, you know, the bottom line is if projects don't grab you on some level, they're not going to get built. And some of these projects are built and some of them are conceptual. But all of them are meant to give you a little something. Maybe it's that design inspiration you're looking for, but something to get you and grab you so that you're really excited to do one of your own. Which is, you know, what we all want to do. Okay, so now we're going to get out with our top 10 list. But as usual, we're going to start off with some projects that, for some reason or another, just couldn't make it into our top 10 list for this year. London-based illustrator and graphic designer Anna Garforth partnered with Ellie Stevens in a series of artistic projects that employ sustainable materials including tree bark, ferns, grass, and most famously, moss. Known as Mossinger, some might consider it poetic living typography, yet others might look at it and call them Gorilla Green. Can you say environmental graffiti? Maybe it's just a tad too edgy for this year's list. You've got to admit the very pink, high-class, luxury modern design of the architect Barbie Dreamhouse is the epitome of good architecture, going so far as to include a meditating space, solar panels, bamboo floors, and green roofs on multiple levels. But come on folks, it's still plastic. A little less permanent and definitely less attractive than Barbie's place, at least this egg-shaped mobile home is organic and eco-friendly. After sprouting, the patchwork of small sacks containing grass seeds will eventually provide insulation. A solar panel provides power to a single lamp on the inside. Maybe it'll make our top 10 list next year when they get all the bugs out. And I mean literally. Okay, now back to the real thing. Without further ado, here is the GreenRoofs.com top 10 list for 2011. Number 10, Client-Specific Boutique Green Roofs. This is the fifth anniversary of the client-specific boutique green roof category. It's our catch-all for the projects that are clearly trendsetters but don't necessarily fit into any of the year's broader categories. These are the early adopters of the vegetecture world, the risk-takers that make a leap of faith and hope that others will follow their lead. In another five years, these projects will either be the standard that everyone tries to copy or the follies that are giggled at over cocktail parties. Eight House not only offers residences to people in all of life stages as well as office spaces to the city's business and trade, it also serves as a house that allows people to bike all the way from the ground floor to the top, moving alongside townhouses with gardens winding through an urban perimeter block. Big architects have designed a long coherent house with immense differences in height, creating a strong inflow of light and a unique local community with small gardens and pathways that channel your thoughts into mountains in Southern Europe and memories of a childhood home. On the rooftop, 11 stories up, these shared spaces culminate in a combined mountain path and rooftop garden. The moss sedum roof covers an extraordinarily long, steep, and sloping roof surface descending 11 floors downward to the edge of a canal in Oristad South, opening up the interior courtyard to a view of the protected open spaces of Calvabad Faled. Located outside of Fort Myers, this $2 billion 25-year plan will raise the idea of a sustainable, environmentally sensitive green community to new heights. Babcock Ranch is the first city planned to be emission-free, 100% powered by an innovative $300 million solar energy facility. This state-of-the-art photovoltaic facility will be the largest in the world, nestled amidst hundreds of thousands of square feet of green roofs. In addition to the 73,000 plus acre nature preserve, more than half of the remaining 17,000 acres within the new city of Babcock Ranch will be dedicated to natural greenways, parks, and lakes. 
ultra-modern electric vehicles will glide along avenues beneath the glow of solar-powered street lamps, plugging in to recharge at convenient community-wide recharging stations. Foster and Partners took on the task to reinvent the site of the former Kitek Airport as one of the world's foremost cruise terminals. Acting as a gateway to the city, the design will create a sustainable multi-purpose facility where local residents can enjoy various forms of entertainment. Encompassing three levels, the long rectangular structure is punctured by four atria that draw daylight into the terminal. A pedestrian promenade rises up through the building and opens onto a large public roof garden with space for all sorts of gatherings. Since it was designed to disembark a total of 8,400 passengers and 1,200 crew members at a time, they'll certainly have a built-in audience here. The huge interior spans 70 meters and is highly flexible. It can be adapted to suit a wide range of programmatic needs, and this is one highly ingenious way to ensure that your building will be used all year round. Plant Chicago is a rehab of a former meat processing plant on Chicago's south side. It's a zero energy sustainable green business incubator, and along with a microbrewery, it will house an aquaponic farm, fish hatchery, and 40,000 square foot shared kitchen, all powered by an anaerobic digester. Plant Chicago will have a greenhouse and apiary on the roof, along with a vegetative wall sprawling across its facade. The green wall will grow hops to be harvested and used by one of the tenants, the new Chicago Brewing Company, which is a sustainable brewing operation. They say that they are also considering a regular green roof on the rest of the building. The private rooftop club at Petit Hermitage is considered one of the premier private spaces in Los Angeles and is recognized as a hummingbird and butterfly sanctuary by the National Wildlife Federation. Replete with native gardens, a heated saltwater pool, cabanas, an outdoor sunken fireplace, indoor-outdoor lounge spaces, and a 360-degree view of the Hollywood Hills, the Bohemian Private Rooftop Club and Butterfly Bar is a magical space, open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner daily. Motivating factors here were to create biodiversity on the roof, marketing differentiation, and a relaxing spot for guests. Petit Hermitage donates to the National Wildlife Federation on an annual basis, and they receive a portion of profits from every event. They say it's a worthy cause, and since the area is home to hummingbirds and butterflies, the selection of this particular charity is both relevant to the property and in line with their brand. The garden brims with night-blooming jasmine, and Chef Antonishek grows fresh herbs and produce on the deck's garden, including parsley, rosemary, peppermint, tomatoes, strawberries, and kumquats. A stone's throw to Mount Vesuvius, the Volcano Buono, or Good Volcano, has a gently sloping profile that rises from the earth as a grassy green knoll. Carpeted with a green roof with over 2,500 plants, it helps to insulate the interior spaces and really integrates with the landscape, reminding visitors of the area's past. A 150-meter wide clearing in the volcano's crater creates the outdoor theater, a market, and even a sloping pine forest. A series of skylights fitted with solar control double pane glass allowed daylight to filter through to the mall, thereby reducing energy needs. The interior of the complex houses shops, a supermarket, a 2,000 seat cinema, restaurants, and a hotel. Renzo Piano describes the building as a contemporary take on a Greek marketplace, a void as a place for events, meetings, dialogue, and the gathering of people. Studio Gang Architects hope to provide the opportunity for buying local produce in Chicago by transforming the Ohio Highway Feeder Ramp into a ramp that feeds. Called Feeder, the project would be situated on underutilized open highway areas with urban greenhouses and gardens, where the public can grow their own produce and green space for even those with browner thumbs to enjoy. The plan is for the pyramid-shaped greenhouses to produce enough local food to supply nearby markets and restaurants allowing just a short distance to pick up the day's fresh groceries. Studio Gang says it magnifies and exposes the important aspect of food production as a necessity for urban living, and it offers a useful and productive gateway architecture that reinvigorates Chicago as an urban habitat. The city of Royat, France is building a mobilization swimming pool to increase patients' choice of cardio, arterial, and rheumatologic cares, and proposes the construction of a sinuous planted ecological wave that covers the pool hall under its curve with beautiful plants. 
Designed by visionary green architect Vincent Calibo, the project emphasizes three major themes, the urban signal, the welfare of the patients, and a high quality environment. Number nine, mobile gardens, temporary green spaces, and exhibitions. You know, it's not enough to have a simple green roof or wall these days. Now you need to attach words like temporary, mobile, or better yet, gorilla, to modernize the green roof typology. Designers are no longer satisfied with the status quo. They want their vegetation to appear under cover of darkness, make a splash, and then vanish before they become too commonplace. Parc d'Esplanade was one of the finalists on a recent international competition held in Paris for innovative ways to incorporate nature into the urban environment, even temporarily. At the click of your mouse, you too can have a glass box enclosing a mini park for your own individual use. It's a park for one, a garden for individual and private relaxation, and the momentary break from the urban environment, opening the senses to the intensified stimulation of nature in a simulated ecosystem of 15 square meters. Dutch artist Anakeen Meyer has produced a number of works that challenge our perception of city and nature. She feels that buses certainly get ample sun, so why not plant the roofs so they can absorb some of the toxins on our polluted highways? Cleansing the air as you travel to work is not a bad idea at all. It's just wasted space anyway, right? The public transportation system of Stuttgart, Germany celebrates its 140th anniversary this year, and this 1996 hybrid bus has been converted into a traveling museum, which will circulate for one year. Planned as an exhibition about the history of the bus transportation in Stuttgart, the stylish screen roof isn't just an anniversary gift, it also sends a clear message of just how environmentally friendly the entire public transportation system is in Stuttgart. This summer, 100 Union Street, South Wark, in London, was transformed from a derelict site into the Urban Psychic Garden, a pop-up community-built garden celebrating medicinal plants, which hosted an on-site cafe and summer festival. The design of the Urban Psychic Garden was shaped by the hospital and the pharmacy, with a focus on medicinal plants and herbs. We know that through millennia, plants have been used to cure all sorts of ailments from medicine men and women to the latest cutting edge pharmaceutical treatments. The Urban Psychic Garden was designed and produced by Wayward Plants, a collective of designers, artists, and urban growers under the collective direction of creative landscape architect, Heather Ring. Parking Day is an annual worldwide event that invites people everywhere to transform metered parking spots into innovative temporary parks for the public good. One participant described it as renegade do-gooding. Landscape architect James Davidge of Green Roof Alliance in San Francisco set up shop in front of the thrift store at 910 Valencia to educate the public on green roofing. It was his first time participating in Parking Day and brought along his canine friend. David extends thanks to Live Roof and Native Sons who were big contributors to the Green Roof Alliance Parking Day project. And he says, we felt like this was a great opportunity to do a human scale or dog scale access to a green roof so that the public can get exposed to something that usually is on, is on top of a roof. Green roofs are a very effective way of lessening the impact of stormwater on a city, especially cities that have combined sewer systems because they retain the stormwater and or delay it. Kind of a parking day, just mobile. For five hours, one Chicago Transit Authority train car was taken over by grass, vines, and other local plants as part of the world's largest mobile art exhibit, Art on Track. While riding the train around Chicago's downtown loop, surprised passengers were greeted by lovely lush grass seats and cozy surroundings of all sorts with blooming and hanging plants. The mobile garden car is the work of nonprofit arts group Noisy Velvet, who promote urban stewardship and encourage the use of sustainable, responsible materials. Members of the Chicago art community were on hand to discuss not only the mobile garden car, but the entire Art on Track exhibit. Inspired by the floating islands of Pandora in the blockbuster movie Avatar, the floating Irish sky garden at the recent Chelsea Flower Show in London was a huge success. Covered by trailing vines and plants inside and out, this is also the show's first design to incorporate a floating pod that can lift people 25 meters into the air by crane. It's also the tallest garden structure ever seen at the Chelsea Flower Show. How awesome is this? A Van Gogh painting brought to life in a living wall. 
Last May, using over 8,000 plants, GE brought to life the masterpiece, A Wheat Field with Cypresses, in the living wall outside of the front of the National Gallery. Since it went up in May, thousands of people have posed for photographs in front of this living wall in Trafalgar Square. Meant to demonstrate GE's commitment to helping reduce the National Gallery's carbon footprint, over 6,600 individual plant boxes with 8,000 plants were grown and installed over a four-month period. Number 8. Interior Plantings – Indoor Building Integrated Greenery Why should building facades get all the greening fun? Lobbies, offices, and restaurants are implementing interior plantings to improve health and morale and give a boost to the aesthetic appeal of the indoors. A scattering of air plants provide a splash of color to guests checking into an ultra-hip hotel. A wall of moss and ferns anchored by a koi pond leads diners down a staircase to an underground restaurant. The interiors are sleek, modern, and planted. The Fünfhofer, or Five Courtyards building, is home to one of Munich's oldest banks, which can trace its roots back to the late 1700s. While they wanted to keep the historical outside facade of the building, inside they wanted something modern and new. Now the Fünfhofer is an airy, bright and green shopping center with its spacious arcades and courtyards. The inside is a hanging gardens of vines designed by Tita Giza and engineered and installed by Partner Indoor Landscaping. From a height of about 14 meters, giant ivies trail down about 10 meters, and in the evenings, the office spaces are illuminated with slowly pulsating lights which change color. There are also various fountains and other artworks found here as well. These photos have been touched up just lightly by Anne, but it really captures the sense of light change and interplay among the beautiful vines. The Moss Room in San Francisco is in a subterranean room of the famous Academy of Sciences, and it features an impressive 40-foot living wall covered in various mosses, designed by Ola Lundberg. The initial idea came when they were faced with the challenge of attracting people down into the basement, a space that was not initially intended for public use. The 28-foot high by 40-foot long planted wall is now a part of a striking transitional space that tempts patrons away from the bustling Academy down into a serene dining area. The wall actually went through two iterations. In the initial design, it was planted with moss, hence the name. However, it proved to be a poor pairing with the beautiful South Asian river fish swimming in the aquarium at its bottom. The final design uses 100-year-old Vermont roofing slates, which were installed upside down, so the slates form narrow planting beds at each row. And here they planted ferns, succulents, and some moss lookalikes. Since this revision, the fish and ferns and living wall are thriving. Emilio Ambaz and Associates designed this complex of buildings united by abundant gardens, offering pleasant vistas to its patients. Patient rooms are arranged so that everyone has direct views to living, breathing plants and trees in front of their windows, as well as long perspectives onto the surrounding fields. Patients at this hospital see greenery instead of ugly barren roofs, and we all know how important biophilia is to our psyches. Since the building floors shift to one side as it rises, garden terraces are created, and this step side of the building offers each patient room a private garden as well. On the other side, above the grand lobby, a multi-story atrium is created by the overhangs of floors, and here, patients' rooms face onto the nicely landscaped atrium, which looks like a huge greenhouse. The NBC Experience Store Green Wall at Rockefeller Center was developed as a piece for NBC's Green is Universal Week 2010, resulting in this beautiful and lush indoor wall in the heart of New York City. A secondary green initiative included a temporary window display to educate the public on green farming options with vertical living walls, as well as to show the portability of the mobile edible wall unit, used as a teaching tool in classrooms and as part of the Green Living Technologies International Food Factory. As part of the GLTI educational curriculum, a Discovery High School team of interns led by teacher Steve Ritz from the Bronx installed all five interior green walls. They're part of the degree track program where students are getting paid to implement the skills that they have already learned in the classroom. This forward-thinking French practice designed an office space for two companies, Pont et U in Paris. Featuring a wooden horizontal plane at the center of the space that serves as both ceiling and desk surface, 
the creative space approaches the traditional workspace in a new way and introduces a very different type of interior landscape to the corporate environment. This multi-level system is constructed out of solid oak and the large elliptical openings both create an artificial lower level but also maximize optimal daylight. Many ficus panda trees are planted along the hall recalling a forest rather than corporate offices. You might not know that not all vertical gardens need soil or irrigation. This Chalanja or air plant garden at the Bardesono Hotel in Yountville, California creates the visual effect of light and airy floating plants by mounting the Chalanja to metal rods which protrude from the copper wall panel. They simply need to be misted with water from a spray bottle every now and then. These star-shaped plants are a species of bromeliads. The epiphytic plants typically grow high up in a tropical rainforest, and although they use very little water, they do require high light. It turns out that the owners had to be this creative. The vertical garden was conceived fairly late in the building process, and there was no way to include irrigation infrastructure. Great design response. One of the biggest and most high-end shopping centers in Asia, the vertical gardens by Patrick Blanc at the Siam Paragon is truly stunning. Individual vertical green panels rise out of the central fountain and welcome shoppers at the mall entrance. This French innovation in garden design also showcases long suspended bands of vegetation accenting the various levels. They're meant to evoke an old Italian theater. Patrick Blanc wanted these plant strips or hanging fences to recall mighty epiphyte covered branches of tropical trees. So he opted for species that would stream down about two yards. There's 15 species of Ripsalis alongside Anthurium viterifolium, Nephrolepsis acutifolium, Ascinanthus, and various Dyschidia. You've no doubt heard of the now famous High Line on New York's west side. Could the Lower East Side also lay claim to its own incredible inside repurposed urban space with the Low Line? The huge abandoned train terminal under Delancey Street hasn't been used since the old Brooklyn trolley was shut down six decades ago. The design team envisions transporting sunlight to the 60,000 square foot space with remote skylights and creating a beautiful underground park with multiple recreational opportunities for residents and visitors alike to enjoy. The brand new O'Hare Airport Aeroponic Vegetable Garden will supply the international airport's restaurants with all sorts of fresh veggies. Swiss chard, red habanero peppers, lettuce, green beans, and 42 other types of herbs and vegetables grown right between terminals two and three. The cylindrical eight foot tall white towers save space and allow for water to be easily circulated. Special grow lights provide optimal conditions to the 26 towers, along with an irrigation system that recycles any waters that the plants don't absorb. In response to the growing demand from travelers for fresh local produce, the garden was funded by HMS Host, the company that manages most of the airport's concessions. The veggies are harvested about once a month and visitors can visit the aeroponic garden in the Rotunda Building Terminal 2. Number 7. DIY Green Roofs and Living Walls for Small Projects Green roofs have reached the mainstream. How do we know this? Just take a look at the number of DIY green roof projects popping up all over. Just Google DIY and green roofs. From chicken coops and dog houses to shipping container additions and tool sheds, the do-it-yourself ethic has spread across the internet to the green roof world. Now, all you greening devotees can flock over to Home Depot and try your hand at building one for yourselves. Tom Lipton, landscape architect and stormwater specialist with the City of Portland, installed one of Portland's first eco-roofs on his garage in 1996. His DIY garage roof practically spawned the city's whole eco-roof initiatives. He was the first champion of the technology, and after his garage rooftop experiment, green roofs slowly began sprouting around the city. And in 2008, Portland started offering cash incentives for green roofing. He says the eco roof is still being used for research of different ideas, some of which work and others that don't. Tom says that he has been especially trying methods that don't need irrigation with unexpectedly good results. This is very important in the West, and he calls it irrigation without water. Tom has also been testing the R value of eco roofs. More to come on that subject, perhaps for next year. This green roof was designed by Emilia Ankaya prior to building the garden shed, 
which allowed for the design of a structurally sufficient 7 and 12 roof system able to hold the weight of a fully saturated extensive green roof. Treated 2x4s were used for slope stabilization, positioned 3 quarter inches above the roof deck, allowing water to drain freely below the grid. Due to an overwhelming response from their work and demand for affordable, design conscious, small scale green roofs that can be nestled into any size property, Living Roofs Inc. developed a plan book for your own build it yourself green roof shelter. This former garden shed was converted into an eye catching leafy art studio by easily encasing it in an ivy covered framework. It's also more than just a pretty green cube, as all of the materials used in this garden come from recycled materials. And it certainly makes for an alluring garden view from the owner's home. This 40 foot long shipping container was transformed into a nifty retro backyard retreat, complete with a living green roof, composting toilet, rainwater collection, and eco-friendly finishes. Painted a deep blue, the studio retreat also features floor to ceiling windows cut out of the container, blown in insulation, and bamboo floors and walls. Yes, an architect did design this, but you can easily see how reused shipping containers would make the start of an ideal DIY project. Dusty Gedge of livingroofs.org says homeowners Jeff and Julie came to his and John Little's green roof course last year. Armed with their eDIY guide and the things they had learned in the course, they completed a Cornish coastal green roof at the furthest arm of England, Land's End. Located in Senon, which is the nearest village to Land's End, you could say it's the first and last green roof in mainland Britain. Here you see the thrift is in full flower reflecting the coastal cliff top vegetation of Cornwall. Although coverage is relatively thin, this is to be expected after the harsh winter weather. The roof was designed along the principles of the DIY guide and is all local in character. Granite edge detailing and substrate sourced locally shows a sustainable use of materials. It just shows you that you can design green roofs for the local context and therefore the local wildlife. Their main concern here was the extreme weather conditions in southwest England. Horizontal wind and rain was a major concern, so some of the details in the guide were adapted to meet the local conditions. Dr. Caddis is a long-term researcher of green roofs and invertebrate biodiversity. The roof provides an important source for her honeybees in her garden. Giangaver's green roof shed was put up four years ago also according to the Green Roof DIY Guide by Dusty and John. She has a solitary bee box at the back of the roof and has two honey bee hives in her garden. The bees love to feed on her roof and while the photo is actually of bumblebees feeding, she says her honey bees also use the roof. In early spring the roof is covered with bulbs such as crocus, daffodils, tulips and irises and these are excellent early pollen source for the awakening bees. Back in 1999, as a professional ecologist, Dr. Nigel Dunnett was intrigued with green roofs, but not yet a professional in terms of construction. So he decided to use his garden shed as an opportunity to try and make a green roof of his own. The important thing to remember when going the do-it-yourself route is that really good information and some hands-on training can go a really long way. In any case, be open to experimentation and using local materials whenever possible. Number six, affordable green roofs solving environmental and social issues. If only buildings were like Legos with one piece locking neatly into another to form vast towers and walls. This is the thinking behind several new designs for cheap and efficient housing complexes. Earthquakes, floods, and other natural disasters have raised entire cities in recent years, leaving people homeless and helpless. A new cadre of architects is busy creating modular living units that can be stacked and scaled to provide homes for all those in need. And, of course, no modular unit could be complete without sustainable features such as green roofs or green walls. Who says affordable prefabricated housing has to be dowdy looking? Stylish and eco-friendly design is possible. The London Borough of Hillingdon's Birchway Eco Community was built as an infill project to provide affordable housing for their residents. It has renewable energy, energy efficiency, and green roofs. Also, the residents here are embracing a green charter that will serve as a guidebook for the entire community on how to live greener lives. 
Five buildings with curved green roofs covered with pre-vegetated sedum mats include both skylights and daylighting windows to let in light to the rooms below. The prefabricated modules are made from 65% recycled steel and from site clearing to construction completion the project only took two months. Rainwater is collected from the roof and stored on the side of the house. South facing PV panels were installed and wood pellet biomass boilers provide heating and hot water. Energy efficiency was a top priority so tight insulation, passive ventilation and heat recovery systems were essential. This award-winning development was built to level five of the UK's Code of Sustainable Homes, with six being the highest. When designing an affordable housing project for the city of Buena Park, California, on a two-acre urban infill site, the directive called to creatively maximize density while providing ample outdoor areas for future residents, keeping construction costs low and minimizing impact on an adjacent residential neighborhood. The $21 million project is being built through a public-private partnership between nonprofit affordable housing developer Jamboree Housing and the Buena Park Redevelopment Agency. The community will be targeted at residents earning 30 to 60 percent of the county's median income, as well as special needs residents. A green roof planted with grasses and other vegetation will cap the single-story parking garage, providing more than 20,000 square feet of outdoor recreation space for resident adults and children. Two stairways and an elevator will provide access to the green roof and recreation area for all residents, including those with physical disabilities. The green roof's amenities are still being finalized, but they're likely to provide a mix of passive and active covered and uncovered spaces, such as tot lots, shovel boards, and barbecue and picnic areas. Here's a futuristic skyscraper that is composed of hundreds of mobile living units from Brazilian architect Felipe Campolina. The design of the skyscraper deals with both environmental and social issues, says the architect. Since the need to inhabit the planet sustainably is an increasing concern for the future, the concept of portable housing was created with a modular system scaled from the standard OSB or oriented strand board plate. The mobile units are composed of a steel frame structure, vertical walls, and floor and OSB with thermoacoustic insulation, windows in tempered glass, and green roofs and walls. It's also equipped with a water recycling system. This proposed design was part of the 2010 skyscraper competition organized by Evolo magazine. Last year, Dominican Republic officials approved Richard Moreta's Container Cities project which utilizes a modular construction system along with recycled shipping containers to be built in the Caribbean island to supply housing for victims of the devastating Haitian-centered earthquake. The containers are inserted into a steel frame system with rubber rollers, allowing them to be easily stacked on a solid foundation. Easily scalable, it can therefore respond quickly to changing needs. It is also lightweight and, very importantly, is structurally sound against earthquakes. The Container Cities project also includes many sustainable design elements, including natural ventilation, photoelectric sensitive cells, solar panels, wind turbines, double thickness insulation, glass facades for natural daylighting, rainwater collection, living roofs, and bioclimatic technology solutions to also make this project zero energy. The architect says that at the end of its life as temporary housing, the container city could either be further modified for more permanent housing or be unbolted and moved to another location, the ultimate reuse. Targeted for disaster relief in Haiti, the Coral Reef Project by Vincent Calibo Architects aims to build a three-dimensional and energy self-sufficient village from one type of standardized prefabricated module in order to rehouse refugees from natural catastrophes. A plug-in matrix for 1,000 Haitian families, this basic module is simply made of two passive houses with metallic structure and tropical wood facades, interlocked in a duplex around a transversal horizontal circulation linking every unit. Inspired from a coral reef with fluid and organic shapes, the overall project presents itself as a great living structure made of two waves dedicated to accommodate more than 1,000 Haitian families. These two inhabited waves undulate on an artificial pier 
built on seismic piles in the Caribbean Sea. From concave curves to convex curves, the housing modules are aligned and piled up in successive layers. A sumptuous interior canyon is created with terraces and cascades of food gardens between the two inhabited waves. Each family would have a plot of land to grow their own food, and their passive home would minimize energy usage, while renewable energy sources would make the entire project carbon neutral. Here, the architect argues that not only do we need vertical buildings that bring many functions into one building, preventing the destruction of what little green space we have left, but we also need structures that can meet our needs as they evolve. Jorge Hernandez de la Garza designed the stackable vertical park concept, a modular skyscraper envisioned for Mexico City, where space is definitely at a premium. Each module provides spaces for living, working, urban farming, water reclamation, and solar energy collection. The modules rise vertically to create an energy efficient high rise structure while at the same time spreading horizontally in order to create much needed shade canopies for street level commerce. These modules can also be rearranged, relocated, and remodeled throughout Mexico City and potentially used throughout the world. Number five, green plus blue roofs equals integrated water management. We know that it's important to capture and slow down stormwater runoff and that green roofs are one way to help achieve this goal. But what if we could actually treat water right on site through a combination of green and blue roofs and then use it for irrigation and toilet flushing in the house? This type of closed loop circle reduces the demand on water use and renders the building occupant less dependent on the public water supply. The projects in this category capitalize on the symbiosis between green and blue. The Van Dusen Botanical Garden Visitor Center is a completely water independent building. 100% of the water used by building occupants will come from either captured precipitation or reused water that has been naturally cleaned and purified by plants grown in the garden, including juncus, iris, and carrot. The green roof will feature a rainwater catchment system, photovoltaic cells, and rammed earth walls beneath. This 22 million, 20,000 square foot project meets the criteria of both the Living Building Challenge and LEED Platinum certification. The partnership between the Natural Energies Advanced Technology Laboratory, UNLV, and Green Roofs for Healthy Cities, IBWM promises to be the first built example in the U.S. Southwest of an integrative approach to building water management. The project builds upon the successful experiences of 30-plus direct water reuse systems installed in the northeastern part of the U.S. and the seven following principles. Harvest all economically available on-site water supply. Integrate, filter, treat, and reuse on-site harvested water sources. Provide 24-7 on-demand storage. Incorporate digital control distribution. Utilize drip subsurface irrigation for green roofs. Minimize grid dependence. And embrace LEED as a building investment strategy. This single-family, 646 residential wetland roof is indeed special, as it's the only type in Israel. The house is built according to green building factors and also includes wall insulation, triple glazed windows, climate planning, passive cooling and heating, recycled material, and vacuum toilets to reduce the use of water. All of the gray water from the house is diverted to the roof via a pump and then is circulated through the various wetland plants on the roof for approximately three days. After the water has been recycled, it is collected in the water tank below in the garden. The homeowners then use the water for the rest of their garden. As you probably know, Israel has a very hot and humid climate with an average of 31 degrees Celsius in the summer with 80% humidity. Only fans are used to cool the house and there's no heating system. Yet the house remains at an average of 21 to 22 degrees Celsius in the winter and 24 to 26 degrees in the summer, and temperature fluctuation is very low. The homeowners say, our green roof is a solution to green roofs in warm and humid climates where water is becoming very scarce and expensive. The Osborne Association project is one of 15 winners of DEP's 2011 Green Infrastructure Grant Program, a program providing grantees with approximately $3.8 million of funds to build green infrastructure projects that will reduce combined sewer overflows and improve water quality in New York Harbor.
The design for this project features an alternating blue roof and green roof system atop the Osborne Association building in the Bronx. This roof is projected to manage over 240,000 gallons of stormwater per year and reduce CSOs to the East River. The Center for Sustainable Landscapes, slated to open in spring 2012, will produce all its own energy and capture and treat all water on site. It's designed to meet or exceed the three highest green standards, the Living Building Challenge, LEED Platinum, and Site Certification for Landscape. The 7.8 million, 24,350 square foot Phipps Conservatory Center for Sustainable Landscapes in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, will serve as the conservatory's education, research, and administration building. This Cesar Pelle design terminal extends the Caltrain line by 1.3 miles into the center of the financial district, and will feature wind turbines, floors that draw in air from the outside, geothermal heating and cooling, and a 5.4-acre green roof slash city park. The San Francisco Transportation Hub promises to com treat combined gray water and stormwater to high standards using biological, mechanical, and chemical water treatment systems with a large-scale integrated water management system. The rooftop park doubles as a subsurface constructed wetland and performs polishing treatment of gray water, which will be reused for toilet flushing. This constructed wetland, also called the Water Reuse Garden, provides a habitat island for birds and insects alike while simultaneously cre creating a unique opportunity for public education and engagement. The city of Jakarta was originally designed as a water city with 13 rivers crisscrossing throughout the city. The concept of the second place winner in the Evolo 2010 skyscraper competition is to purify the Chiliwong River's environment to its original form. This conceptual project aims to collect the garbage of the riverbank and purify the river water through a system of mega filters that operate in three different phases. Phase one separates the different types of garbage using any generated compost to fertilize the riverbank soil. Phase two purifies the water and then feeds it back to the river and nearby agricultural fields through a system of capillary tubes. In the third phase, all the recyclable waste is processed. The building is designed to produce all of its own energy through wind, solar, and hydroelectric systems. Number four, over-the-top residential wonders or green roofs of the rich and famous. The large budget and a little imagination, the sky's the limit. The houses in this category speak for themselves. These are the projects that get you drooling, the eye candy of design professionals and laymen alike. Just try to keep your jealousy in check. Danish architect Eva Harlar designed V-shaped house for a family of six. The three-level house is located on the eastern coastline of Jutland, Denmark. The goal of the mirror house was to build a solid wall to each side neighbor for privacy, while creating a central light and stairwell which would funnel the sea breeze through the center of the building. Each roof garden creates a layered effect with the roof above, resulting in the feeling that each level is its own cottage nestled in a garden. Here is a residence that seeks to integrate itself into the surrounding landscape with green walls and roofs. Designed for a cinematographer and his family, this house in the outskirts of Brussels is composed of mixed-use professional studios and private quarters. The zigzag house takes its design inspiration from the last letter of the alphabet. Part of a sprawling family estate, the zigzag house dog legs around three internal courtyards that capture natural light for the house's interior. Viewed from the vicinity's taller structures, the building's diagonally pa patterned planted roof provides the final design touch. Villa Ronde is part of a complex that includes a private museum, a guest house, and a resort. The green roof villa circles around a central open courtyard designed to deflect the strong typhoon winds that are common in the area. The building, which seems to grow out of the hillside, is oriented to capture the winds and cool the house's interior. The exterior is painted to match the surrounding rocks and blend into the hill. The entire roof is accessible and is covered with 30 centimeters of earth, grass, and plants. This New York City penthouse seems to sprout up out of the green roof. Windows provide glimpses into the studio and apartment below, while up above a path winds its way through a grassy sculpture garden of Roy Lichtenstein. Designed by Caliber Studio, this green roof is energy efficient as well as stylishly chic. The garden was created by combining two separate building roofs at different elevations into one continuous system. This 
is sky-rise luxury living at its best. The super luxurious apartment building has 175 apartments and a 75,000 square foot high-rise garden. The concept for the building, as well as its name, came from the site's heritage as an orchard. Now, a private orchard on the ninth floor provides a habitat of quiet and serenity for the exclusive use of its residents. The project also contains green walls at its entrance and at the entrance to the ninth floor orchard. Number three, living architecture and cybertecture fueled by clean technology. It's one thing to talk the talk of sustainability and greenwash a building so that, on the outside at least, it looks like a model of ecological design. It's an entirely different situation, however, when the building in question not only looks the part, but actually gives back and improves its immediate surroundings. The projects in question perform a number of features, including generating their own energy with wind turbines and or photovoltaics, harvesting and recycling on-site water, filtering particulate matter from the air, and producing food. This 32,000 square meter egg-shaped building incorporates passive solar design to decrease heat gain and lower energy loads. The green roof also moderates temperatures by using natural vegetation to assist with cooling the building envelope. The Cybertexture Egg will incorporate solar photovoltaic panels and rooftop wind turbines to generate on-site electricity. A gray water recycling system will harvest water for irrigation, landscaping, and toilet flushing. Here, two towers climb 350 meters to a rooftop observatory in Sky Park. Equipped with water recycling plants, wind turbines, and photovoltaic cells, the Taiwan Tower is full of sustainable features. It also includes four different types of hanging gardens along the tower structure and an aviary for endangered bird species. The Biosphere Sustainability Center will be built on a 2.8 acre brownfield site near the Thousand Islands in Gananoque. This multi-use facility will have exhibition and conference facilities, office space, a market hall, and artist studios. Green building strategies include renewable energy harvested from a variety of sources, sustainable landscaping, and a green roof. Part of the goal for the building is to demonstrate to the public how renewable energy from the earth, wind, sun, water, and biomass can be used to provide clean heating, cooling, electricity, and waste management. La Tour Vivante is a vertical farm skyscraper designed to combine agricultural production, housing and activities in a single system. Designed by French architecture firm Atelier SOA, the conceptual project in Rennes, France includes the following sustainable features. Wind power, reclaimed rainwater, biogas production, and on-site food production. A skin wraps around the structure and admits sunlight to targeted locations. The Fizalia is a floating garden that generates renewable energy to clean waterways. The amphibious garden is inspired by jellyfish called the Fizalia Fizalia, which means water bubble. Architect Vincent Calabo designed the self-sustaining mobile ecosystem that is 100% renewable powered. It is a large, whale-shaped floating garden that uses biofiltration to cleanse polluted river water. The vessel creates solar power using integrated thin film solar panels and draws hydropower from the moving water beneath. When there are solar panels, the Fizalia is covered with a green roof through which water is pumped to filter out contaminants. There are four individual gardens, each themed in line with one of the four natural elements, earth, wind, fire, and water. Buildings are currently the highest single contributors to climate change, accruing approximately 45% of the world's current energy consumption. The concept behind Biomes Group's project is to streamline building technology to diminish pressures on ecosystems by creating a new model of energy self-generation and material degradability. Detox towers contain an internal and external membrane system that through live algae lichens and synthetic matter integration can process matter and contribute significantly to decrease energy consumption. Take the Eiffel Tower, turn it upside down, place it in the middle of the ocean, and use it to filter all of the plastic and other debris from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in the Pacific Ocean. The Lady Landfill Skyscraper, a conceptual project and entry in the Evolo Skyscraper Competition, consists of three main functions. 
trash collectors at the bottom, a recycling plant in the center, and housing and recreation above the surface of the sea. The waste would be heated in the recycling chamber and converted into a gas, which could then be stored in huge battery-like structures and used as energy. Instead of being stationary, the Lady Landfill skyscraper also has the ability to use the garbage at harvest to propel itself to new locations. Number two, the Chinese connection, rise of the green giant. The aesthetic boldness of contemporary Chinese buildings is increasingly matched by an attention to environmental standards. According to Wang Jimin, Deputy Chief of the Vertical Greening Academic Group of China Green Building Council, and Vice Chairman of the International Rooftop Landscaping Association Roof Greening in China has reached 12 million meters squared. While other countries have puttered their way towards the adoption of living architecture, moving along in fits and starts, China has plowed through and is rapidly becoming a hotbed of green roof activity, technology, and innovation. China's government financed the greening of 100,000 square meters of roofs in 2008, mainly in areas close to the Olympic facility. The Olympic Village in Beijing, China is the result of such funding. This lead gold project boasts a variety of sustainable features, including solar panels, green roofs, and an extensive rainwater recycling system. Designed and completed in only four years, Terminal 3 at Beijing Capital International Airport opened ahead of schedule for the 2008 Olympics. T3 is the world's third largest building by area at 986,000 square meters. It will accommodate an estimated 50 million passengers per annum by 2020. The terminal's aerodynamic green roof and dragon-like form celebrate the thrill of flight and evoke traditional Chinese colors and symbols. The 27,000 square meter high-tech rooftop garden contains modern landscaping techniques and technology including rainwater harvesting techniques. It was designed to emulate natural Chinese landscapes with Chinese wisdom and oriental charm in mind. The garden provides space for public recreation and crowd evacuation. It uses nine landscaping features to symbolize nine characteristic topographies of China, namely human habitat, here represented by the main building itself, farmland, lakes, mountains, seas, forests, alpine meadows, valleys, and deserts. The building was constructed in 1995 and the classically styled roof garden added in 2000. The design includes a roof garden, roof lawn, and green parapet. The CPPCC building plays an important role in promoting and popularizing roof greening in China. This 15-story tower stands as an icon for the urban transformation of an old industrial neighborhood. The building draws in people from the street by providing a wide, arcade-like passageway that connects one side of the site to the other and creates a plaza for socialization. The top portion of the gateway features a similarly carved out plaza which creates a multi-tiered green roof terrace. Natural sunlight and un unobstructed views of the city are among the perks of Hangzhou Gateway. The NCKU Magic School of Green Technology is the first energy saving and zero carbon building in Taiwan and a recipient of the highest green building certificates from Taiwan's Ecology, Energy Saving, Waste Reduction and Health, EEWH, and the U.S. lead rating system. The project incorporates a number of sustainable features including energy conservation, renewable energy, waste reduction, water recycling, and nano photocatalysts. The top of the building forms a sunshade that blocks most direct solar radiation, thereby reducing the need for air conditioning. It is covered with a roof garden made of drought tolerant plants. The project was officially inaugurated on January 12th at the National Cheng Kung University in Tianyin, Taiwan. This horizontal skyscraper is as long as the Empire State Building is tall and incorporates 484,376 square feet of green roofs. The Vanke Center is a mixed-use building including hotel, the headquarters for Vanke Company, offices, service departments, and a public park. A conference center, spa, and parking are located under the green roof, which is a stunning public landscape. The floating horizontal building allows sea and land breezes to pass through the public gardens. The landscape, which was inspired by Roberto Burley Marx's gardens in Brazil, contains restaurants, pools, and walkways. 
The Wenqi Center is tsunami proof and is one of the first LEED Platinum rated buildings in southern China. While it may look like it should go in the conceptual section of this presentation, Tianjin EcoCity is actually slated for construction in the next few years and projected to be completed by 2020. The city will include apartment buildings, an administrative and civic center, renewable energy production, and stacked structures connected by sky bridges at various levels. EcoCity will function as a showcase for new green technologies and serve as a model for other new cities in China. It will make use of sustainable technologies including solar power, wind power, rainwater recycling, and wastewater treatment, desalination of seawater. China has also pledged that 90% of traffic within the city will be public transport. And our number one category for 2011 is skyscraping sky gardens on roofs, walls, and sky bridges. For the third year in a row, our number one slot has been awarded to skyscrapers. We highlighted the agricultural producing tower oases last year and focused on self-staining mega vertical structures in 2009. This year's skyscraping sky gardens pays homage yet again to the towering Tyrannosaurus rexes of the architectural world and delves into the interconnections between buildings within a city. Far-fetched? Maybe. A little wacky? Perhaps. Awe-inspiring? Definitely. The Pinnacle at Duxton, designed by RC Studio Architecture and Urbanism, is the tallest public housing project in Singapore. It is made up of seven connected towers. The 50-story towers are connected by sky bridges at the 26th and 50th floors. The 26th floor sky bridges are for residents only, but the sky bridges on the 50th floor are open to the public. Up to 200 people a day can visit the sky bridges and enjoy spectacular sweeping views of the city. The final connecting sky bridge was completed in 2009. Pinnacle at Duxton was named Asia and Australasia's Best Tall Building 2010 by the Chicago-based Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat. Known for his green bioclimactic skyscrapers, Dr. Ken Yang's newest addition to contemporary Singaporean architecture is the Solaris, the latest addition to the Fusionopolis R&D hub supporting the Infocom technology, media, physical sciences, and engineering industries. The flagship project consists of two award-winning towers at eight stories and 12 stories high. A grand, naturally ventilated central atrium separates the two towers with over 90,000 square feet of a continuous spiral landscaped ramp tied together with a facade of white and green ribbons. The three meter wide planting strip provides shade and ambient cooling to the building facade, creating overhangs that function as horizontal sun shading for the glade facade and, in fact, Solaris's vegetation exceeds the area of the building's original site. Office floors are linked by a series of sky bridges, which span the atrium at upper floors. Aside from pushing as a linear park, the Solaris is a showcase of sustainable technologies. Solaris has been certified BCA Green Mark Platinum, the highest possible green certification granted by Singapore's Sustainable Building Benchmark. Charlotte, North Carolina firm Little designed the Entangled Bank concept, a holistic design that connects various elements of community-like housing, recreation, work and tourism, in a sustainable shell that includes a living wall, wind turbines, and an on-site biogas plant. The Revision Dallas Competition finalist uses these sustainable strategies to improve the natural environment and connect elements within the community. Another conceptual project, Guangzhou Power Center, consists of a series of hill-shaped buildings covered in vegetation. Located 35 kilometers south of Seoul, the high-density, self-sufficient city will consist of housing, office, culture, retail, leisure, and education spaces for its 77,000 inhabitants. Plantings are placed around the terraces with a floor-to-floor -floor circulation system to store water and irrigate the plants. Every part of the program receives a terrace for outdoor life. Vertical City is a three-tiered tower skyscraper conceived by British architecture design collective Desi Texture. Instead of the current rundown building in the slums in Caracas, Venezuela, the architects envision each of the three tiers defining distinct user groups and activities, including retail, hotel, apartments, and offices. Wind turbines embedded within the hollow structure will collect energy, and green roofs and walls will keep residents cool. 
Symbiotic Interlock is a modular system designed to attach to existing buildings and create additional space for outdoor recreation, vertical gardening, and wind power generation. Consisting of several basic modules with particular functions, Symbiotic Interlock can be combined in various ways to create networks of green functionality outside of and in between existing skyscrapers. Standing 1,111 meters tall, Logistic City is a vertical forest designed for the city of Shenzhen, China. The conceptual project by Julian DeSmet Architects was designed as a self-sustaining tower city, characterized by ascending and descending paths, flanked by lush plant life. The building will be adorned with wind turbines and trams. Other portions of the building will be indented, thereby exposing a greater area to natural light. The top tier sections of the city will depend on systems for storing and recycling water, including green roofs. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you enjoyed our top 10 list for 2011. It certainly was a, a great deal of pleasure putting it together. Don't you agree? I loved every minute of it like I do every year. <laughs> so we brought you the latest and greatest from this year. But um, as usual, you can see that these vertical buildings are becoming the latest feature. And it, they're only going to continue to to proliferate with uh, the way the population's growing, food scarcity, um, food security, we, we need to start building up. And, and the need for density, population yeah, density, keeping our buildings, our population within an area so that we can save the surrounding areas for agricultural use, for natural ecological exactly. uses. So we need to make better use of our buildings and put as much greenery in them as we can. We do, and the only way to continue doing that is with green roofs and green walls so that we can create these uh, continuous green corridors within our cities, you know, covering the walls, continuing up on the, on the roofs, and, uh, and in between with the sky bridges and the, the different connections. You know, I was in Singapore last November at the International Skyrise Greenery Conference, and we visited that pinnacle at Duxton, and it's amazing. It's, I mean, it's, I mean, it's almost scary. You feel like you're at the top of the world with these two sky bridges, and the top one is the one that's available for the public to see. But it, the building itself is kind of shaped kind of like an S. So you could be on one end and you could see people on the other side. And it's really cool the way they allow like 200 people um, a day to visit these. But there's uh, green roofs up there. There's places for the playgrounds and pl places to sit. It's just the way of the future. You have to you know, incorporate recreational spaces as well as food production and uh, you know, other, other things into, into our, our, our built environment. Yeah, so we're already looking forward to next year's list. I've already got a few categories up my sleeve. We're going to have to wait and see what, what those will be. Um, it's, always, it's always a long time between years, and I know that you're all chomping at the bit to find out <laughs> the latest. But, you know, you're going to have to wait a little more. We may, however, as... Yeah, you, you may find some new projects in uh, our presentation that we'll be giving later on in the year. Um, there's Conference India in next month in October coming up that you never know, Greenness.com may, may be at. And then there's a conference in Philadelphia. In December, so we will be there presenting our top ten. So we'll still have a few you may more months find some new projects in there. That's right. So until then, I'm Linda Velasquez and I'm Haven Kears for Greenroots.com, and we thank you for sharing uh, your time with us and enjoy the rest of the virtual summit. Have fun. <laughs>